We're Jess and Freddie, and Winnie of course, and we've embarked on a six month home renovation of our London house. After years of saving and two years living here, we took the plunge and knocked down a few walls and added a new floor in the loft. It is chaos and we're living through our build and sharing all the highs and lows of taking on a home reefer project. Hello, welcome back, season two. We've had a three week break and we have made so much progress. I feel like this burst of time we've seen the most happen because it's all been indoors. The first two months, two and a half months were all the outdoor work and excavating and the demolition and now the builders are inside and there is work going on on all three floors and we are like trying to live in between the mess and the chaos. It's working just. I feel like on that note we are due a quick update on how we've got on with our progress. So let's start with the loft. We have seen so much change in our loft over the past three weeks. It started out with them finishing the frame of the loft, installing the staircase, and now we can actually access that loft without having to climb up the ladder on the scaffolding. It is looking so good. Last week they actually finished the plastering in there and they've cased in the ceiling around my beams, which also got approved by building control yesterday. So that is such good news. We know we can keep them. There was a point where we thought if building control reject this as like a fire safety, then we'll have to cover them with plasterboard and it would have all been a waste, <laughs> but it wasn't, it's good. They have done the electrics. We also have a plumbed in en suite. We've also got built in cupboards now, so we can actually start storing all our stuff there. We are gonna be moving up to the loft this weekend and it also means then that the builders can work on the rest of our house without us being in the way. It's been a real mission of just moving our stuff from room to room as they need to get access to the rooms. Scaffolding came off today and she is looking sharp. And that's the superstar that created this. They've done like gray around the edges, which as you can see, these are all white. And we actually forgot to ask for that and they've just done it and it is so good, like so good. And we're obviously gonna have the gray windows going in and we're gonna paint this window and then we're gonna have the dark gray bifold. So it's all gonna look perfect. We are fully into phase two of the build. But some things never change. The builders are now officially working on all three levels of our house, which is mega stressful and chaotic for us. And we also feel really guilty that we're just always in their way. This is our kitchen, our temporary kitchen. And this is all our food store here, but then these are all the builders tools. So this isn't gonna work. So this evening we are gonna be moving our kitchen into here, which is gonna be fun. Day by day our space is shrinking, but it's shrinking because work is continuing. So this morning, the builders have now put on the beams as to where that partition wall is gonna be. This is gonna be a hallway, and then this is gonna be a hallway. And then that's gonna be the kitchen door into the kitchen. This is our utility room that you'll obviously loop back on yourself. So you'll come through here, fridge, freezer, pantry, sliding door into a utility space here. Since the scaffolding came down yesterday, look at all that light flooding in. It's so much more than we actually ever thought. Mandarin stone tiles have just arrived for the ensuite. So these are the white cemento slabs for the wall. So they're six, 60 by 60, like really big, smooth, beautiful. And then in here, these are the chevron. Oh, yes. Absolutely gorgeous. So we went for a darker floor and lighter wall. But we really they... went the extra tile for those, didn't we? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the extra tile. She loved it. She likes the dad she jokes. Likes joke. Freddie's got a haircut, looking sharp. Oh, hello there. Gosh, they've built the frame. So this is going to be the, the door to the bedroom. You either can have the door upstairs like this, or it needs to be at the base of the stairwell down there for fire regulations. We decided to have it up here because I like the open space feel of this area. And I like that feeling of downstairs having that open space. That's in. Then we've got this little space here. 
and putting all their wiring through. Then they did the electrics. Wall lights either side of the bed. And the space in between either fits a double or a king. These are still looking good, my exposed beams. Oh, it's case that in. Oh, God. Oh, yeah, there we go. That's all done now. So they've yeah. cased all the plasterboard around. That is, it's quite a job to do that, it's very fiddly. This is all going to be painted the same colour though. The beams, the ceiling, the walls, the skirtings, just to give even more height. But you can now see, so if we hadn't kept the beams exposed, the ceiling would be this high, like where that two metres is there. So it is a lot lower. Um, it is definitely a good difference. We could live up here. It is more of a room than we ever imagined and I think that sometimes putting up walls actually adds a more feeling of space because the, of the other option is to just have this as the staircase banister but have the door downstairs but actually I feel like it just then looks like you've shoved a bed in an attic that's not very big whereas actually creating the room with the walls it is a room and yes it's not a big room but it's a room I don't know if I'm explaining that right but it was the right decision <laughs> to put the wall up so in summary <laughs> you in summary you like rooms with walls. That's correct, my friend. <laughs> oh, the radiator's in. in! Oh my gosh, it looks so good. Can, can we not? Oh my word, that radiator looks incredible. And these are the valves. I got the whole thing on eBay, uh, separate shops, but I'll link them below. I just adore it. This was the cheapest place I could find radiators and the valves were 27 pounds each, which, it's so much cheaper than the £70 I paid for the ones downstairs and they look exactly the same, so amazing, amazing, good quality, beautiful. Freddie wanted these bricks exposed and he didn't speak soon enough. I didn't, I was joking. They were a right mess. If they were nice bricks, like, well, maybe. But look, look at that. <laughs> yeah. Some Victorian was having a right laugh. <laughs> Sloppy. Yeah. That'd be me if I was a bricklayer. <laughs> Okay, so Winnie and I are just chilling on the bed and I am just taking a little Skillshare class. So as I've mentioned before, Skillshare, the online learning community, are sponsoring my home reno series. So each month I chat a little bit about Skillshare on my channel and also I share with you a class that I've taken. Skillshare has thousands of classes in so many varied subjects on their platform and it's literally for anyone from lifelong learners to complete beginners on any topic. So I am so excited to chat about this class I've just taken. It was by M Henderson who is one of my favourite interior accounts to follow on Instagram. She has a class on Skillshare all about styling your home. Perfect! As you can see on here um, I've got all the classes on the side and they're all broken down into very short modules. So I just did this class. I'm going to link the class below so you can check it out if you want. I still have my offer which gives the first thousand people a free trial of Skillshare premium membership. Get involved. Also, there's no ads on the platform. It's purely based learning experience. So bonus. So this class was so helpful to me right now because I'm in the process of ordering furniture and accessories for our home. Now I know that sounds mega premature because we're still like in the build stage but some of the lead times on this stuff is like up to three months. Anyway it was super helpful and I just wanted to actually share a few things I learned about trends. I love this because I'm an absolute sucker for a trend. There was a point where I wanted to panel every single room in this house. I think I got two done and then Freddie stopped me. So number one start small. So if you're into a trend, buy a small accessory instead of buying like a neon velvet couch. See if you like it, see if it fits with your style and then scale up from there. Two, do not shift your entire house to fit the trend. A trend should kind of mold in around your current style that you have. So don't completely change up your style just because something is in fashion. You will tire of it, it's a guarantee. And this one I really loved. She said that trends normally are inspired by previous things, so a lot of the time there will be a vintage item that you can source instead of buying a new one. So first of all, it will be a more authentic version of the trend, and secondly, it's good for the planet. I loved it, I thought it was so helpful, and that was just like one five minute module of the whole 40 minute class. So yeah, if you do wanna check out the rest of it, then I have linked it below, you can check it out. They did the tiling yesterday up here. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. And they've obviously skimmed, painted this, and then I'm gonna go over with the lime wash paint. I can't even, like, this 
is so much better than I could have ever imagined. We had a little bit of a gripe pickle yesterday because I had to decide. I picked anthracite for the floor and they didn't have it in stock. So we had to go with black licorice, which was stressing me out thinking I was gonna have black grout and it was gonna be too bold, but it's actually perfect. So that was really lucky. Also just look at these beautiful details in these tiles. Our tapware is Methven, so really good quality tapware. This is actually supposed to come out like this, but because we've only got two meters head height in here, because we did have to lower the ceiling for planning height restrictions, the builders have managed to put the pipe like vertically up and in the ceiling as high up as possible. So it just means we've got like decent head height under the shower. Obviously it's like 70% done right now, but it's too gray and black for me. Like it's still quite clinical looking. So we need to add a bit of warmth to it. So we're getting the wooden countertop for the base in here. Obviously I'm gonna style it up with a few plants. We're gonna get a gold mirror, like a medicine cabinet mirror here. Also today's progress on the first floor. So obviously we've just come down from there and this is our giant hallway. There is our bathroom and our bathroom door and wall and they've started building up the frame of where that new room is actually going to sit and this is going to be the hallway now. Obviously like makes so much more sense with the space, a much bigger bedroom and then that will be the bathroom. <laughs> Winnie wants into the office but Freddie is on a call and you cannot Winnie. No it's not allowed. I know that progress looks so positive, but it has been an absolute journey whilst it's all been going on. I didn't realize how much of a stressor it was for me having things totally displaced in my house. And I guess I've never really had to consider it like this before, but it is, and it is having an impact. And we tell ourselves that it's a short burst of time in our lives and it's gonna be over so soon and the rewards are gonna be so worth it. So we're getting through, but I just find that sometimes day to day, you just kind of crumble by the end of the day and think, I can't do this, this is so stressful. Let me just push past my current bedroom door, a plastic sheet. Look at those cables. I feel like I say every single day, this has to be the low point, and then another day happens, and I think, no, this is definitely the low point, but I swear, this has to be the low point. That is where my dishwasher was an hour ago, and my washing machine and my sink. All we have is the oven, I'm baking potatoes tonight, and I just made up some tuna mayonnaise, and I actually drained off the can in this toilet, because I don't know where the drain is. Um, I need to dig for it. I think it's probably there, but there's actually no drain. I said that we would only do takeaways on the weekend and it's Wednesday and I feel like tomorrow I'm not cooking again. Like three nights in a row and this has been hell. Right, I need the cheese grater and it's in the dishwasher. Go on Fred, unload the dishwasher, it's your turn. Sorry, the cement mixer's in the way. <laughs> Have that little cheese grater and just wash it under the hose pipe. <laughs> Quick rinse. I genuinely think that camping is cleaner and more efficient than this. Mm. Bon appetit! Huge, huge, huge transformation today. Like, I know I say this a lot, but this is definitely the rock bottom. Everything that needs to be demolished has been demolished. This is where our kitchen used to be, and now it's a shell. Nothing else is going to come down, only can go up. They're going to put the steel in there tomorrow. And then they're going to get building the rest of this wall. They've now built the brickwork around where the bifolds are going to be. And then we're going to go through here. It's going to be a living area. So sofa, TV, coffee table. And then into the kitchen. So the island is just going to be like bang right here in the middle. Then we're going to have the run of units here and the shelf. And then we're going to have the dining table here. Entrance is going to be through there. They took out the window today. So now we can see where the entrance is going to be. The last thing standing, who'd have thought the thing we actually had to like prop up with masking tape. <clears throat> she's still going and she's still giving us heat in one room of the house. 
even though it's been a challenge, especially having our only drinking water source as a host tap and our boiler packing in early, which has left us without hot water, it's getting those little snapshots of progress that make it all worth it. The light streaming through our Velux windows or walking up our loft staircase, having our visions of exposed beams and chevron flooring come to life and be exactly how we wanted it. It's all those moments that keep us going and I know it's gonna be so worth it. We've got two months left before the builders aim to finish, so it's gonna go by in such a flash. And yeah, I'll be sharing weekly updates with you until we're done. And I'll see you next week with another video. Bye.